This is Sam Stark and in this video we are looking at motion with variable acceleration. So last video we looked at when it has the same acceleration all the time, but this time it's different because the acceleration can change. So we know that the gradient of a displacement time graph is the velocity at that instant. So that means that the velocity is equal to ds over dt. So in other words, differentiating the displacement. But the gradient of a velocity time graph is the acceleration of that instant, which means that acceleration is equal to dv over dt, which is the differentiation of velocity, or is equal to d2s over dt squared, which is the, double der the second derivative of um, s. So a more general way to put it is if we put s, v and a here, we can see that s is going to differentiate to give v then v is going to differentiate to give a on the other hand a is going to come back and that's going to integrate to give v and then v is going to integrate to give s. So that is the general rule you need to learn for all of this, is this will come in very useful as with the questions that we're about to answer. So here we have a couple of questions. One of them includes differentiating and the other one includes integrating. So the first one says that s, which is displacement, is equal to t plus two, and that's multiplied by t minus six. And the first thing we can do is put this, um, we can expand by ticks to get t squared, and that's going to be minus 4t, because we have a 2t minus 6t, and then minus 12. So therefore, it says find v. So that means in order to go from displacement to velocity, we have to differentiate. So that means just differentiate that, so therefore 2t minus 4. But then it asks then to evaluate v when t is equal to 10 seconds. So therefore, we can say that t is equal to 10. That means that we're going to have 2 times by 10 minus 4. That is equal to 16 meters per second there. So the next question says that acceleration is equal to 6t minus 12, and then velocity is equal to 2 meters per second when t is equal to 0. Now we have this extra information so that we can work out what c is it, as obviously when we integrate we're going to end up with that constant. So it says find v when a is equal to 0. But first of all we'll have to find an expression for v. So that means that what we're going to do is we've got that a is equal to 6t minus 12, that means that v is going to be equal to 3t squared minus 12t and then plus c. So in order to work out what this c is, we're going to say that t is equal to 0 and then v is equal to 2. So that means that 2 is going to be equal to 0 minus 0 plus c, so 2 is equal to c. So therefore, v is equal to 3t squared minus 12t, and then plus 2. So now we have that, what we're going to be doing is putting this back into this and saying out what v is when a is equal to 0. So when a is equal to 0, that means that 6t minus 12 is also equal to 0. So therefore, 60 is equal to 12. That means that t is equal to 2. So that means that v is therefore going to be equal to 3 times by 2 squared minus 12 times 2. plus 2, velocity is therefore equal to minus 10 meters per second. 
So the next question has slightly more problem solving in it. And this says that the acceleration of a particle after t seconds is given by 40 minus 8, and that's meters per second squared. So given that the velocity, which is v, of a particle is 6 meters per second when t is equal to 0, first of all, we have to find v in terms of t. So in question a, what we're looking at is an integration. And this is because we start with a, and we know here that a is equal to 40 minus 8. And then what we want is v. And we know that in order to get from a to v, what we need to do is integrate. So if we integrate this, we're going to get 2t squared minus 8t and then plus c. Obviously, at the moment, we do not know what this c is, and that is why it gives us this second line. So it says that given the velocity v of a particle is 6 meters per second when t is 0. So therefore, v is going to be equal to 6 when t is 0. So when t is 0, that's going to be 0 minus 0 plus c. So therefore, c is equal to 6. So this means that the velocity is going to be 2t squared minus 8t. And then it's going to be plus 6. And that is our answer to the first part. The second part, however, is slightly harder. And it asks for the distance between the two points that the particle is instantaneously at rest. So when it's instantaneously at rest, it means that v is going to be equal to 0. So that means that we can work out the two times, as it says the two points, as we have a quadratic here, that's good news because it does mean that we will get two points, but the two times that is going to be zero. So therefore, we can say that 2t squared minus 8t plus 6 is going to equal zero. So therefore, solving this, we find out that t is going to be equal to both 1 and t is equal to 3. So that means on one second and at three seconds, the velocity is going to be zero, and this means it's going to be instantaneously at rest. However, it asks us to find the distance. So now we have what t is, we now need to integrate this again to get the displacement or the distance. So that means that s, which is displacement, is going to be equal to two thirds t cubed, and we're obviously just integrating this here, then that will go to minus four t squared plus six t, and then plus c. Now the problem we have here now is it's not obvious what c is going to be. And it looks from this, in the pre previous uh, first half of the question, we, it was very obvious what c was going to be because it told us this here. However, now it doesn't give us any indication of what it's going to be. But that doesn't matter because what we're going to do is we're going to be finding the distance between the two points. And it's this between, which is mean that we're going to do one take away the other, which is going to cancel the c's out. So therefore, what we're going to have is if we start with a 1, we've got 2 thirds and then t cubed. If it's 1 cubed, that's going to be 1, so we don't need to bother with that. There's going to be minus 4 plus 6. And that shall be minus. And when it's 3, what we're going to get is 2 thirds. Um, times by 3 cubed. And we'll put a mean one around this. And then that's going to be minus 4 times by 3 squared plus 6 times by 3. 
Now that means that what we're going to get, because the C's have cancelled now, we don't we didn't put the C in, but they would cancel because it's minus the other one. It means that we're actually going to get eight thirds, and that is what that first part is equal to. Minus all of this is in fact equal to zero. So that means that the distance is going to be eight thirds meters. So that is how we use our ideas of integration and differentiation and an idea of variable acceleration to work out a question like that. So thank you for watching this video and see you soon. Bye.